So with less than 24 hours to go until New Hampshire's first in the nation primary, it is now a head-to-head -head matchup between President Trump and Nikki Haley after Governor Ron DeSantis dropped out. And the results in the Granite State could shake up the GOP primary even further. But regardless of who wins tomorrow, Wisconsin will be a major battleground in the general election. So let's talk about it all with Senator Ron Johnson, a Republican from Wisconsin. Senator, thanks for hopping on with us this morning. Appreciate it. Good morning. Happy to be here. So, uh, oh, how quickly things change in this game of politics. Your top line thoughts heading into tomorrow's primary now that it is a two-person race and what it means for Republicans. Well, from my standpoint, it's what it means for our nation. Uh, Democrat governance has been a disaster for this country. Uh, I've often stated that if you were asked to de design a strategy to destroy America, you'd be hard-pressed to come up with a better game plan than what uh, President Biden and his uh, Democrat allies in Congress have initiated here. Open borders, 40-year uh, high inflation, a war on fossil fuel, the, the embarrassing and dangerous surrender in Afghanistan that has emboldened our, our adversaries and really set the world on fire. So th this is about America. This is about uh, a change of direction, uh, a change of course off a very destructive path uh, that we've been put on by, by President Biden and his Democrat allies in Congress. And I do want to talk about the border in, in just a minute, but I did also want to point out the fact that um, you've said you will not make an endorsement in, in this primary. Over the weekend, The Hill reported that Republican senators have been facing pressure to endorse President Trump, knowing that he, quote, has a history of turning his ire against those he sees as disloyal. Sir, have you faced pressures of your own in that regard, particularly now as the race has narrowed down? And are you leaning in any particular direction? I face absolutely no pressure because I just don't endorse and people realize that. I, I have faith in Republican primary voters. I'll let them go to the polls. I'll let them select their candidate. And then I'll get behind the individual who becomes our nominee. It's pretty simple. Do you think Haley has a chance heading into tomorrow? And, and what's she going to have to do in the next 24 hours to remain in the race and a viable candidate? Well, she'll have to, like any candidate, to contrast herself with the, her opponent. Um, talk about the things that she would do as president of the United States to put this nation back on a successful course, to provide prosperity, uh, equal opportunity. Um, you know, all the things that made this country great, that is what Democrats have forgotten. That is what they're ignoring. And that's what Republicans need to do. Yeah. OK, let's pivot to the border. Uh, you know, lastly here, talks are still dragging on and on for a supplemental spending bill that would tie border security to Ukraine aid. You've been skeptical of the White House's ability to budge, saying it's like, quote, negotiating with the arsonist on, on the migrant crisis. What continue to be the main sticking points? Why haven't we seen a deal? And also, what do you say to Republicans of the world, like Lindsey Graham, who warned the GOP, to those who think that if President Trump wins, you know, that we would get a better deal? He says we won't. Uh, what's your response to what's going on right now? Well, first of all, funding for Ukraine is not universally popular. Uh, I think most Americans uh, do support the, the freedom-loving people of Ukraine. Uh, the problem is that the over $100 billion that we've already spent People really are not 100% sure of where it's gone, and nobody's really describing where the next $60 billion is going to go to as well. So, again, Ukraine funding is uh, uh, not that popular. Uh, when it comes to the border, I mean, our problem in negotiating with President Biden and his Democrat allies in, in, this, in Congress is that they want an open border. They are the root cause. This isn't something they inherited. This is something they caused. Uh, my guess at this point in time, they're, they're recognizing, uh, because Mayor Adams is saying it's going to destroy New York City, uh, you know, the mainstream media is finally having to cover the border in a more honest fashion. So now there's political pressure on the administration. So they're looking for political cover. I, I'm not so sure they're negotiating for a secure border. They don't have to. I mean, President Trump basically secured the border under existing law. If this president was serious about it, if he thought he needed some kind of additional tools, Republicans would, would certainly... Yeah. Uh, uh, do it, give them, give him every type of uh, tool he needs to secure the border. So I, I just, you know, plus, plus, this negotiation is completely secret. I don't have a problem in confidential negotiations if the result of that is going to come before committees and have enough time for both public and congressional uh, debate and discussion. That doesn't seem like uh, what the, the leadership of both sides want to do. They want to Where this secretly is negotiate some yeah. deal and then bring it up in, for an immediate vote. That's sick. I know, and I know you have said the border is the most important and pressing issue uh, of this election heading into November, bar none. We'll see how many voters show up to the polls in November uh, with that top of mind.
Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.